Hello friends. Today we're going to corn beef. Do you like corn beef? I make my own. <laughs> We've got our water boiling, so we're we're we are now ready to start making our brine that we're gonna put on this beautiful eye of round roast. Gorgeous lean cut of meat. A tri-tip. If you're not familiar with the tri-tip, you ought to be. Seriously kick-ass cut of meat. And the traditional cut used for corned beef, a brisket flat. And the total weight of these cuts here is right at 10 pounds. We're gonna be doing uh, two and a half quarts of water and two and a half quarts of ice. So we end up with around, you know, probably a little more than a gallon of total weight. So when you're watching the ingredients, just kind of keep in mind that we're doing about twice the meat that you would normally do. So if you cut the recipe in half, it'll be perfect for a single brisket if you're just doing a brisket or five-ish pounds of other beef. So anyway, I'll shut up. We'll start cooking. We're going to add two cups of kosher salt. A cup or slightly less, but right at a cup of sugar. And then I'm going to give that a stir. Just kind of start to get that brought into solution. So we've got two ingredients to go after our salt and sugar. One is the ingredient that gives corned beef its signature pinkish red color and that's sodium nitrite. When it comes to sodium nitrite, you need to use the correct amount of sodium nitrite that's prescribed for the amount of weight of meat that you're going to be brining. There are different mixtures of sodium nitrite. You have the uh, Tinder Quick out there. There's, you can buy regular sodium nitrate, pink salt they call it, in different concentrations. We're gonna be using a 1.25 ounce concentration of sodium nitrate pink salt. Uh, but don't pay attention to this amount going in this recipe. Make sure that you read the box or container that your pink salt comes in and use the appropriate amount for the weight of meat that you're going to be curing. We're going to go ahead and add ours. And this is just out of our DIY jerky kits. It's pre-measured uh, for five pound increments or five pound batches. So we're gonna use two of those since we're doing 10 pounds of meat. The last ingredient, and a lot of people will make their own pickling spice. They'll get all the individual ingredients and they'll mix those into the brine. And that's totally cool. That's the cool thing about cooking. You can do it any way you wanna do it. We're into practical and easy that delivers good results. You can get a pre-mixed pickling spice at the grocery store, it's about five bucks, um, and then it saves you having to go through and make up your own pickling spice blend. You just get the mixture, and I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use about half the bottle, probably about an ounce. That's gonna be rowdy, I like it. All of the salt and sugar is in solution. We've got the uh, pickling spice blended in, it's starting to make a nice tea. We're gonna go ahead and shut the heat completely off. What we're gonna do, we need to cool this off before we put it into the bags with the beef to brine it because this is hot enough it would start to cook the beef and we don't want that. We want this to be room temp or even a little bit cooler for the brining process. So what we're gonna do, we started with two quarts of water, which is approximately four pounds, four pounds and a little extra. So we're gonna put in another four pounds and a little extra of ice. Control the chaos a little bit there. He really did. 
did lose his marbles, didn't he? Yeah, he lost them good. <laughs> and the water isn't super critical. So if you end up using a little extra ice or a little extra water, that isn't that isn't a terribly, it's the least critical part of the whole equation. The most important part is the sodium nitrite or quick tender or cure, whatever form of cure you're using. It's very important to have the right concentration of cure for the weight of meat that you're curing and ultimately cooking. That is cool even. Not quite cold, but it is certainly cool. Definitely lower than room temperature, so we are ready to start the brining process. And I'm going to take approximately one third of the mixture into this bag. approximately five cups per batch. But then again, the tri-tip's way lighter, so we're gonna use less on it. So, we got about three cups. And the main thing you wanna do is make sure and get everything completely, completely covered. And this is definitely the traditional corn beef cut. And then the remainder of the brine to go in here. We'll start with the scoop and then we'll get it down to a manageable level and I'll just dump the rest in to make sure we get all of the goodness in there. Now, we got these guys all bagged up and ready to go uh, for the brining process. The brining process should take, depending on the size of the cut, if it's a smaller cut, you can probably go five to seven days. Typically for a brisket flat, seven to ten days. So we'll be back in a week or so, ten days, in that, in that time frame, once these have brined. We'll rotate them every day or so in the fridge just to make sure that we're keeping everything mixed up and the meat gets cured properly. been 10 days since we put our different beef cuts into the brine. We are ready to make corned beef today. So we've got our three cuts up in the refrigerator. We're going to head up. We're going to get them all rinsed off and ready to cook. We've got three different cuts. And we're going to cook them three different ways. The first cut we're going to cook in the instant pot and we're going to use the tri-tip in the instant pot. We're going to use the meat and stew setting, which is going to be an approximately 30 minute cook, but we're going to give it a nice long rest after that, kind of on the keep warm setting of the Instant Pot. The second cut will be our round roast, and we're going to do that in a traditional method, which is a large pot, large covered pot on the stove top, low rolling boil, two and a half, three hours, kind of until we had a nice internal temperature of around 190, 195. So we're gonna kind of treat it like a barbecue cut, but we're gonna apply the heat with boiling water, which is the traditional method of cooking corned beef. Then the third, and this this one I'm, I'm really kind of excited about because it's, it's not a traditional method of cooking corned beef. We're gonna take our brisket flat, we're gonna rinse it off, 
and we're going to go on our gas grill on a high heat to put a nice crust on it and start to get that internal temperature pulled up into that 150, 160 range. Then once we get the internal up to where we want it, we're going to move that brisket flat onto the Traeger smoker on a lower heat setting, 225, 250, kind of the, the medium setting on our small Traeger until we get up to 195 degrees and then we're going to rest it on the smoke setting for another hour or two. So the brisket flat with that cooking process is going to have really concentrated corned beef flavor. Uh, we're really expecting some cool stuff to happen there and we're excited about it. So let's go get it done. And all of them came out great. I mean, the brisket flat, definitely a little bit saltier, a little more vibrant flavor. There's some smoke in there. Uh, definitely a lot going on there flavor-wise. Pretty cool stuff. If you're into a little more exotic, it's where you want to be. Uh, these are both fantastic. Corned beef cuts, very traditional. Um, the tri-tip, I think if we had to pick one of the three for everybody, that one's going to appeal to the most people. Crazy tender. The Instant Pot had it done. I mean, it would have been ready to eat in less than an hour uh, just because of the way, you know, the pressure cook. But uh, anyway, that is our corned beef spread for 2022. Hope everybody has a fantastic St. Patrick's Day. Thanks for watching and uh, go eat some corned beef.